Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am here with my very dear friend, Jennifer, and we are going to be talking about something that's a really hot topic among a lot of moms right now, and that is transitions, and mainly transitions in where you live, but there's also a lot of career transitions going on, and we're just going to kind of bounce back and forth on what we've seen in our lives and some of the things that we've done to make transitions go a little bit more smoothly for ourselves and our children. I hope that this episode gives you something that helps you, and if you're in the middle of a transition right now, I will be praying for you (laughs) because they are not always the easiest thing, but they can sometimes be the best thing. So enjoy today's episode. I'm here with my very good friend Jennifer today, (laughs) and we're going to be talking about transitioning. Yes. 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 Lots of transition. (laughs) Lots and lots of transition. Yeah. So there are so many people with COVID that are transitioning where they live. They're transitioning schools for their kids. They're transitioning careers. I I feel like there's more movement going Mm -hmm. on over the last, you know, year and a half than probably I've ever seen within the people that I know and love. So, and you were one of them. Yeah. You transitioned states. (laughs) (laughs) All the things. All the things. Yeah. All of it. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about that transition and how how did you handle it? And maybe some strategies for those that maybe haven't done it yet or are kind of in the midst of it and maybe could just use, I don't know, yeah, like a peppy, you can do it. <laughs> our goal was really finding somewhere that we could have our kids in school. Um, I definitely tried to homeschool and I would say I'm not cut out for that (laughs) as much as I like to think that we were doing okay we were floundering and I have two girls that enjoy sports my older one is a competitive softball player and so our goal was where can we land that we can provide a good environment for them and then further we thought well if we're going to move you know where maybe taxes would be a little lower as an entrepreneur um taxes. It's a thing. Everybody's got to pay them, right? And so uh, we really just started looking. I mean, Googling part part way of, you know, where where's a great place to raise kids and community and low crime and all the things you want as a mother. Okay. And so we landed in Idaho. <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, shh, don't I know. say that. Don't say that. Everyone here. Idaho. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we had our kids shadow. So we came up for a long weekend and we had them shadow students that were already at the school because we wanted them to be included in the decision. So Mm -hmm. they're now almost 13 and 10, but it was over a year ago. And we went and we looked like, where would we play sports? What would it look like? And um, we talked to a lot of people. Social media is powerful. I mean, searching hashtags on Instagram and Mm -hmm joining different Facebook groups and ask the questions before you make that decision. And, you know, you want the good, the bad, the ugly, I guess, as they say, and Mm -hmm. you'll get a lot of opinions um, and you kind of have to filter through, you know, what is opinion, what's real. I would say I made a lot of social media friends before I got here. So when I did get here, I had people that I already connected with. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're someone who goes to church, find a church. I mean, it's a great way to build community around your family. If you enjoy tennis, pickleball, whatever it is, um, book clubs. And that's really what I did was I decided, you know, I didn't want to just be stuck at home. So I built community around me really quickly. I think one of the things that you said that's really important is deciding what you want because you do get a lot of opinions Mm -hmm. and knowing what you're looking for and what those what those, I don't know, things are that are super important to you and your family. So you mentioned community. And I think for most people, especially when they're moving, leaving a community that 
they're already very entrenched in and going somewhere where maybe they don't know anyone mm-hmm. um, is probably one of the really scary things about it because you can always find a new, you know, hairdresser. And yeah. even though that's definitely trial and error <laughs> as well. That was a little challenging, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so you mentioned social media. Did you do anything else besides social media to create that that community for yourself? I would say social media was probably really powerful just because, I mean, it's where we all go to, right? It's kind of a love-hate relationship, but it was the opportunity to ask a lot of questions in different Mm -hmm. mom groups. You know, where do you get your hair done? Where do you take your kids for piano lessons or whatever it is? But I would say to start with a baseline, like write down all the things that you value as a family. And that's what we did. Um, It was with my husband and my two daughters and we wrote a list and everybody had their things that they wanted. We also loved the outdoors. So it was important to us to be close to snow and water and my husband grew up in the Midwest, so he kind of missed seasons, Mm -hmm. but I didn't want a season like Chicago (laughs) that winter. Love going to visit our family there, but I just couldn't see myself living there being that I was born and raised in Southern California. I'm used Mm -hmm. to good weather, but creating that list of what do you value and letting your kids, I mean, my kids, there's certain things that they really valued. Um, Mm -hmm. My youngest really wanted to be near water. She loves water. And I was a little bit nervous. We've lived near a coastline our entire lives. We've had the beach. And so um, we even looked at the hiking trails. We walked along the waterfront, you know, just so she could see that she would have what was important to her. Where my older daughter was more, what will my friends be like? (laughs) And what are the softball teams like? You know, will she still continue on with that sport? So with kids, when you, so you went through this process with them and helping and allowing them to help make the decision, right? Mm -hmm. When you landed, how did that go? Was there any remorse, hesitation, tears, frustration? Yeah, I would say it was an hour into our drive. I just started sobbing because I was born and raised in the same area. I never went away, you know, to college or I just, I Everything I did was in Southern California. That's where my friends, my family. And, um, you know, you get past that initial, what did I do? And then we got there and I pushed myself outside of my comfort zone. I introduced myself to the neighbors. Um, Not the best baker, but I can bake. But I was that person, you know, I baked treats and they knocked on my neighbor's door and I said, we're new here. And, you know, you're going to have some people that... (laughs) You say you're from California and it's like, ah, but I think a lot of people want you to be a part of the community. And Mm -hmm. so just introducing yourself, asking, do you have children? You know, what what are their ages? What are their interests? And my daughter found a group of girls to walk to school with within weeks. And my youngest really wanted to ride the bus and, you know, just getting to know the moms at the bus stop. That was something that was really foreign to us. And you know, actually walking her to the bus stop and getting to know people and and then looking. There's so many kind of event tools. You can look on Eventbrite. You can look on the social media events and pushing myself to go to them. I remember seeing something that the women, they were going to go to a flower farm and pick flowers. And I thought, I don't think that that's anything I would do, but it was a great way to meet people and the relationships that I've built from attending events that were pretty far outside of my comfort zone have just been great. So get uncomfortable, basically. Get uncomfortable, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I always tell people I've moved a few times in my life. And um, I always tell people I feel like you have to give a place a solid year before you can make any judgment whatsoever. Because I think you do go through that, what did I do? And then am I going to fit in? Am I going to find my stuff and then you kind of start to get into a rhythm and then you really get to enjoy the place and I think that's when you know I know when I moved to Seattle for school oh my gosh I was miserable for (laughs) a while but someone said to me give it give it give yourself a year and I was really grateful for that wisdom because it definitely at a year and I was like oh I really enjoyed this I miss this and it's also hard not to compare like oh I miss Mm -hmm. this about someplace else okay what what can you find here that's better or different and I think doing allowing yourself to find the the gratitude and those things how did Jill and Cameron was it a smooth transition for them I feel really fortunate that it was smooth for both of them but I think 
probably the biggest part of that was they were included in the decision. Mm -hmm. So I do know there's people that are forced to move, right, for careers or whatever, but try to include your kids as much as you can. You know, maybe it's, hey, this is the new state that we're going to go to. What is something that you would like to participate in? Or what is, you know, something that you would like to do when we get Mm -hmm. there? Or what's something you want to look up and see if they have there? Because I think they transitioned better than I did. I mean, they were had friends within days and we we also were very picky on the community though we definitely looked for you mm-hmm. know top rated schools because I said okay if we're gonna do this like I want to be centrally located and I want good schools and I want neighborhoods with kids I mean we walked around the neighborhoods and kind of looked you know how many kids are we seeing and driving through at different times and so we did we I would say we did homework, but we did it pretty quick mm-hmm. <laughs> from when we flew up to when we actually moved was all within a month. I mean, we had done a lot of research prior, though, in different areas we were looking to live. So involve involve your kids if they're those ages. And I think we did at really good ages. So our oldest, I was going to say that yeah. ages are different, too, though, because mine were older, which was a little bit more challenging yeah. in different areas. Yeah, our youngest elementary school and then our oldest just started middle school. But it was great because I felt like middle school, they were all kind of trying to get used to it. So it was it was a good age. So if you are considering moving, I would say they were really good ages to mm-hmm. transition. So let's talk COVID. Did I think because I do think that that's the reason that a lot of people are reassessing their lives. And to your mm-hmm. point, things like taxes and things that financially impact you, right? I mean, there's mm-hmm. different... I've, I've talked to friends of mine that are moving out of New York because they feel like the stress is just so insane that they want to go someplace where they feel less stress. And some of that is financial. Mm-hmm. And I think that, honestly, COVID has been the reason that a lot of us have been impacted. Did you, um, did you notice any difference with your kids' stress level? Mainly because of the two of you coming down in stress level, right? I think your kids do feed off of what you're putting out there. And that was one thing that I would say COVID was really eye-opening was we didn't have to live where we were living. I think I just didn't think of anything else because I was born and raised there. And yeah, we enjoy the weather and we enjoy a lot about where we moved from. Mm -hmm. But what we realized was by moving, we almost kind of gave ourselves a pay raise and we realized we could do weekend trips. We could go there, Mm -hmm. you know almost as much as we want once a month if we wanted to. And so, yeah, those were definitely some things. But I think overall, seeing that our stress level was down, just less to worry about as well. Mm -hmm. The kids just, I think as a family, we're just more relaxed. And then we really took advantage of getting outdoors as much as we could. I think that's good for anyone. (laughs) Just get outside, get fresh air. And I would say we've been more active as a family since moving. Would you do it again? Oh, yeah, I would. Yeah. For sure. So for someone that's on the fence, they're thinking about, they're thinking, oh, maybe, maybe not. I'm scared to leave. Would you give them that nudge? I think so. I mean, and making sure it's the right move. You know, it, what what are you gaining mm-hmm. versus what are you losing? And then just like I said, immerse yourself in the community as quickly as possible with not only you, but your children. And I don't know, my husband's kind of a... I don't know that shy is the right word, but he's definitely not going to go out of his way to get to know people. But I would say I was the more social one. And then Mm -hmm. by default, he starts making friends with the husbands of the people that I've met. But kind of building your social circle and, you know, so that way you have that time when you're not working, you do have something to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything else you want to add? It's a big topic. I mean, it's a big topic for a lot of people right now. And I think that you guys, I watched you, obviously. I got to watch mm-hmm. you guys do it, and you guys did it really well. But you and Kurt were absolutely on the same page about it from beginning to end. So I think that that was super yeah. helpful. I it's think a, it, Yeah, it's definitely a hot topic. I feel like just even in some of the nationwide mom groups, and then I see people asking, you know, who mm-hmm. lives in Tennessee or looking at the Carolinas. And most, I think what I see most commented on is people want community Mm -hmm. and that's typically maybe what they're lacking and not that we didn't have a great community. I mean, we definitely miss like our softball family or our kids were in a small private Christian school. We had a great community there, 
but again, just to lower the stress. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing that's yeah. been really good for us. Reprioritize. I think a lot of people are reprioritizing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this with me. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, I think the topic is a timely one. So it's yep, a good thing sure. to chat about. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.